night about the game plan with Marcus Hirsch. That's me, Marcus Hirsch, correspondent handicapper for the Racing Forum. Game plan is a digital product the Racing Forum puts out on a daily basis. Handy snapshot of race across the country. We've got some stakes, picks, grids on weekends and holidays, some multi race wager possibilities, and playbook, which is uh, some spot plays that handicappers from the company have selected uh, potential wagers at various venues. And that is specifically what I'm talking about on this video. Uh, I am focusing on two tracks in the Midwest that I cover Arlington, which has uh, Arlington Million Preview Day, four stakes, three graded races, all on turf. And Indiana Grand, which has a night card featuring the Indiana Derby and the Indiana Oaks. At Arlington, race seven, the Arlington Handicap, grade $350,000, one and three sixteenth miles on what ought to be a firm turf course, unless the forecast for a slight chance of thunderstorms. Uh, well, if it rains, we'll see, but there's, it's not supposed to rain. It should be fast and firm. Um, for these turf races on an excellent Arlington card. And the horse that I like in this race, El Picaro, should enjoy those conditions. He's a Chilean import. Races in Chile are typically conducted over very fast ground. This horse is one of the best horses in Chile, winning multiple group ones. I think in his loss before he was exported to the U.S., the distance got to him maybe a mile and a half. What happened in his first start in America for trainer Ignacio Perez was he broke flat footed and was held off the pace by his jockey and that is not how this horse wants to run all of his best races uh, before he left chile he broke running either set the pace or was just off the lead he's a, he's a powerful galloper who can sustain his speed over a distance of ground never had an opportunity to get that sort of trip in the wise Dan stakes his u.s debut he didn't kick home after finally um being let loose at the top of the stretch and still was beaten uh, only a few lengths, and in a decent performance that actually should move him forward um, for his second race off a long break. I don't think there's a lot of pace in here. Uh, this horse, if he breaks decently under a leading rider, who say LW Jr., will either be on or just off the, the pace. He's listed at 9 to 2 on the morning line. I am concerned that he could be bet lower than that, but I'm guessing that there still will be a fair enough price for me to participate. Um, I will probably be linking him up with number one, Bandua who had a couple dirt experiments, the first of which was okay, the second of which was a slop, was disastrous. I draw a line through those races. In the end, this is probably a turf horse, and there's two turf races behind uh, the excellent synchrony in the Fairgrounds Handicap, and then last out in a loaded edition of the Manhattan Stakes, the grade one on the Belmont Stakes Hunter car. He both ran, he ran well enough in both of those races to be very competitive in the all Handicap, where I am hoping to finish second to El Picaro. On to Indiana Grand. Um, first race I picked out here is a somewhat nondescript Philly and Mayor one mile main special weight race on the turf race three. I like number two, Divine Quality, who is listed at four to one on the morning line. Could be slightly lower than that, but I think that there is enough um, there are enough other ways that people might turn better specifically among the greater set of people uh, that Divine Quality for connections that aren't going to be familiar to a lot of the people, trainer Anthony Cunningham, who also has Border Horses, and Chucky Samuel Bermudez, uh, might be overlooked. Should it be this horse, just generally speaking, is faster than anyone else in this race, although she is a 10-race maiden. She was disqualified post-race from a win last fall at Delaware Park, a main special weight on the turf. Um, her last race uh, was decent on paper, and if you watch the replays, even better than a load. She had a very difficult trip, three wide between horses, surged up powerfully on the turn, sustained her run longer than she probably had a right to, and just got run down uh, at the end by one horse in a performance that would probably win this race. And I think she can do better than that. She's been ridden on the lead a number of times, and she does have plenty of pace, but I don't see from Looking back, why she can't sit back off the pace a couple of lengths if a couple of these stretched up sprinters in here want to go from the lead early. And anything close to a morning line to find quality will be a play for me in race three. Uh, several stakes races, the penultimate of which is the Indiana Oaks. That would be race eight, if memory serves. Um, yes, it is race eight. Um, Grade three, two hundred thousand dollars, mile sixteenth on the dirt. Uh, what started me off uh, getting interested in betting this race was the presence of 
Number five, Street Band, the morning line favorite, who I think will be favored. Uh, five to two, uh, her listed odds just seem like, that seems like a reasonable price. I just don't, she's fine. Um, I, I don't have any problem with her. I just don't think that she's any better than any number of horses potentially in this race. Uh, she was decent over the winter at fairgrounds. Her breakthrough came in the fairgrounds Oaks, but she won comfortably. But uh, Serengeti Empress, who would go on to win the Kentucky Oaks, a race in which Street Band finished a distant seventh, um, Serengeti Empress uh, bled in that race and was eased. And absent Serengeti Empress, it was not a great field. The Aurora is okay. She finished second in the best race, one of her best races of the year. Sweet Diane was also in the Indiana Oaks, was third. I think that Street Band ran at the peak on the day in a so-so race with class level. And while she could win, I do think she'll be over a bet. Two horses interested me in this race particularly, and I settled on number one, Kim K, because I think she is going to get loose. Um, there's one stretch out sprinter, but I don't know how much quality that horse has to challenge her for the lead. And even if she were to go hard, I think Kim K could settle if necessary. I'm not, I'm hoping that's not the trick she gets. I want her to go to the front. She had a breakout performance last time at Churchill Downs, had shown some talent at two enough that they tried her in the grade one ounce of Bidies event for season that didn't go well at all. I think that's a throwout race. She caught slop in her spring comeback race, um, first started three in May, and then stretched out to a one turn mile at Churchill, set a very strong pace and never showed any signs of wavering. Also galloped out, I thought, with great energy, like the extra turn and an extra half furlong, and Indiana does have a fairly short stretch. This might even be slightly less of a test of stamina in some ways than that one turn mile, that long stretch Churchill downs. Uh, she was very impressive. I know she's back on fairly short rest, 16 days, but we did two starts this year. Fairly lightly raced, unexposed. They did work her back. Trainer Peter Miller obviously knows his stock. Well, I don't think she's going to bounce. I think she's going to get loose. I think she's going to be a handful of run down. Oh, this is another horse that I could see being fed down. Uh, if she gets hooked, or even maybe if she doesn't, the other horse that I thought had a great chance here uh, is number 10 with Dignity. If you go ahead and watch her replay, she's two for two in her career, a sprint win, and then her allowance race win. Uh, she she looked like a horse of great talent, perhaps greater than her buyer speed figures would indicate. Not much pace, couldn't run a fast final time last time. Uh, I'm definitely going to get her in the mix. But I'm going to be keying on Kim K, number one, to win the Indiana Oaks racing in Indiana Grand. Best of luck to you on Saturday, three racing across the country.